Shalom, Yashara, I want to give infinite honors to my Heavenly Father, my great King, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh, by Hashem, Hara, Kakadash, double honors to our apostles and other bishops, a great millstone, a salutation to my fellow laborers and the Mashiach, Yahweh, pushing the beloved true cross to full wind. Shalom, one of you brothers. All right, uh, this topic I'm going to go into about being um, drunk off of this B system, the philosophies here in America. And when you're so intertwined and so interlocked, you, your uh, integrity and your morale gets compromised, okay? It's certain things in the society you can't speak about if you have a certain job, all right? If you're a teacher, a, a doctor, or a lawyer, you can't speak against uh, atrocities that these so-called Jews commit against people because they will fire you for your anti-Semitic uh, comments. You can't speak against the LGBTQ uh, community if you have a view on it and you are contrary to their... Uh, abominable things that they do all right you'll get fired if you say some things off air even off air if somebody record you saying it all right so that means your second amendment rights all right no your first amendment rights i think it's your first amendment rights don't quote me on it but i think your first amendment rights is the right to free speech and all that all right and i think your second amendment rights is the right to bear arms okay but your constitutional rights so i don't get it wrong all right i could say it on a broad spectrum like that a strip all right and you're compromised and that's what's going on what you're about to hear about with drake and um that degenerate dj khalid drake his people are somewhat getting bombarded according to the media um i think it's all false flags from the jewish perspective and khalid, dj khalid's uh people um, I even think G DJ Khalid parents are over there, okay? And he can't speak on it because they'll take his his uh his place, all right? They'll take away the money he's making, the clothing lines he's having, the the job uh the people that come buy beats or whatever from him, all of that'll get stripped away because his employers, all right, are, are those Jewish corporate bankers. So he can't say what he feels, no matter how much if he's disdained about what's going on. He's against what's going on. If he comes out and speak out, he will lose his, uh, he'll lose his money. He'll lose his resources. You know what? Precept just came on my mind that, uh, I don't know where it is. Uh, bear with me. It was an account where they was talking about Yahweh shot it when, uh, when those Jewish sellouts, when those uh, Pharisees and Sadducees sellouts said, if Yahweh Shai keep doing what we're doing, they would lose their spot, what the Romans have given them. All right, so they would compromise. They weren't worried about enforcing Yahweh by Shem Shai. Here we go. The first scripture that popped up. Here we go. John 11 and 48. All right, this is what happens when you're compromised. Okay, I'm going to start at verse 47. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council. All right, these are supposed to be the leaders of our people back then, okay? And sick, it said the chief priests, okay? They show you those were the leaders, so called. And said, What do we, what do we? For this man doeth many miracles. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him, and the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. So, first off, they was envious of him. And second off, they were uh scared of the Romans. All right. They were they were here. They were trying to appease the Romans. They didn't want the Romans to take away their, their position. All right. That's what happened when you're constant, when you're compromised, your integrity, you have no more integrity. All right. And you're a, a total piece of shit. Men like that would not enter into the enter ye into the kingdom of heaven. All right. And this is what we're about to hear uh, when um, DJ Vlad is speaking about uh, Drake and uh, DJ Khalid. All these things are going on with their people, but they can't speak on it because they've been compromised. All right. These they are not, so they're no longer men. All right. They're no longer men. They can't even speak on their families and, and, and protect their families. All right. They can't even speak on it, much less go and get in battle to protect their people. This is what happens when you're less than nothing. This is the true meaning of being less than nothing. And that's what America does to you for you to flourish here. All right. For you to grow here financially. All right. You have to submit to the rules and regulations 
that this this place set in part and those rules and regulations might be totally against uh how you were raised to think how you was raised to look at things all right your belief system it'll be totally against your belief system so what are you going to do sell your soul to live or you're going to keep your integrity and most people in this society they will uh sell their soul all right, and these guys have sold their soul. They're looking at that people. Uh, DJ Khaled is looking at his people getting oppressed, destroyed, annihilated, and he's scared to say anything because he don't want to lose his place from the Romans. So I'm about to let the clear play, and then I'm gonna funnel it through the scriptures. Well, right now there's the whole Israeli uh, Gaza situation, mm. and I really thought about this. Okay. And, I, and I'm Jewish myself. Okay. I've been to Israel and I've been to Palestine. Yes. I've met with Israeli families in Israel. I've met with Palestine. All right. And he's a so-called Jew. All right. He's an Edomite. All right. The so-called, I mean, the, the authentic Israel, Israelites, the genuine Israelites, the people of the book, the sons of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, are you so-called Negroes, Native Americans, and people uh, of Hispanic descent. We're the people of the book. Okay. They, they are imposters. But for the sake of the conversation... Of the of the of, of the uh, for the sake of the sit down, you know, for edification's sake, you know, uh, we're gonna deal with it from that perspective, okay? Because uh, Drake's mother is a so-called Jew, but she's not a real Jew. She's a fucking Amalekite, all right? They are devils, okay? Palestinian, uh, Palestinian family in Palestine. We actually went over and met with them and everything else like that. But, but my take, and I made public statements about this, is that I feel that both sides are wrong. Okay. You know, I feel that the leaders of both these places are, you know, their policies are killing the civilians. Mm -hmm. I, I definitely don't agree with what Hamas did, coming in, killing hundreds of people, killing Americans, kidnapping people, killing kids, killing concert uh, goers and everything else like that. Uh, and I also don't believe in the... You know, the policies that Israel has put on Palestine right. and the Gaza Strip. It basically created an open air prison. There's lots of barricades. They can't really move freely. It's two million people there. And there's been a lot of bad feelings. I'm not a fan of the Israeli government. Right. And I put that out there. And I, I basically said, look, listen, like, you know, Kehlani recently made a video saying, you know, she's, uh, I believe she's Palestinian or, or, or Arabic. And she's like, yo, we need to say something. Like, all these entertainers aren't saying anything. You need to say something. Mm -hmm. So I made a tweet. I saw it. I said, has anyone noticed the most famous Jewish person on earth, Drake, and the most famous Palestinian person on earth, DJ Khaled, haven't said a single thing about the Gaza-Israeli conflict. Mm -hmm. It's not like Drake is too busy. He's been writing paragraphs about Joe Budden hurting his feelings about his new album. DJ, DJ Khaled has been working overtime promoting his new Jordan sneakers, but both of them have been silent on this topic. Why is that? Because both of them are so thirsty to maintain their relevance, they wouldn't dare risk insulting a segment of their fan base. Heaven forbid that Now that's a devil telling the truth. They want to lose they don't want to lose the riches that they have accumulated here in America. That's a fucking devil telling the truth. You have those instances where a devil will come out and tell the truth. This is one of them. In fact, uh, this is basically what he's saying. This is Matthew the 19th chapter, all right, the 23rd verse, and it reads, then he said to the, his disciples, verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven, and again I said to you, it is easier for a, car, a camel to go through, go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of Yahweh, Okay? These guys don't want to lose their riches, all right? They don't want to depart from their riches, which is all is going to um, pass away with fervent heat over here in America, all right? They're fighting to to climb up a corporate ladder that's uh, burning and descending into oblivion, all right? So they're going to lose their immortal soul for earthly riches that can be taken and given to away, get, taken away from you and given to you at the drop of a dime. The Lord make it poor and make it rich. They don't understand that. OK, so they don't want to they don't want to lose their uh, riches that they accumulated here. So their integrity has been compromised and they got a devil telling them that. You know, you fucked up when the devil telling you the truth.
affecting a segment of their fan base. Heaven forbid that Drake might debut a number two behind Taylor Swift because some of his Palestinian fans choose not to stream his album. It'd be the end of the world if Khaled sold a few less sneakers because some Jewish people decide not to buy his Jordans. And that's the difference between artists of today and timeless legends like Tupac. You know damn well Pac would be the first one to speak about something that's so close to home. It's so true. If something that happened with Pac that he identified with, mm -hmm. that he grew up with, He'd be the first person. I totally agree. Would not hold his tongue. Not at all. And if he lost some sponsors or whatever, screw it. Right. I totally and agree. some people say, well, Drake is really black. He's not really Jewish. Mm -hmm. And what I say to that is, Drake has a Jewish mother. Does. Which by Jewish law makes him Jewish. Right. At five years old, his dad and his mom divorced. And he lived with his mother. Mm-hmm. His white Jewish mother and her Jewish family in a Jewish neighborhood right. called Forest Hills in Toronto. Right. At 13 years old, he had a bar mitzvah. Mm -hmm. He's very Jewish. He's very. And, and that's another thing. You heard him say at 13 years old, they had a bar mitzvah. All right, at 12 years old, all right, you're, you're a man in, in amongst our culture and our customs. All right. You're a man. You're, when you see at 12 years old, all right, the Lord uh, deals with you as a man. All right, America pussifies males here, talking about you ain't a man until you're 18. At 12 years old, a 12-year-old boy can do everything on the farm. He can uh, use the, 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 the oxen to till the ground. All right, he can sow seeds. He can feed the chick chickens. He can take a saddle on and off a horse. You remember on the, on the movie Color Purple, um, Mr. Toe Hoppo, hey, go saddle up my horse. He wasn't number like 11 or 12 when you seen him do that. He was just a little boy. And he he got the horse and saddled the horse up. A 12-year-old boy can run a farm, all right? There's nothing on the farm he can't do. Now, at 12, you don't have your full man strength because so, sometimes the feed and stuff be too heavy, all right? But he can do it. Uh, a 12-year-old can run a farm. If you can run a farm and, and, and uh, take care of it, like your father taught you, you can have your own spot, all right? You can get out of your father's house and do your own thing. Now, just because you was 12 years old in our kingdom didn't mean we sent you off right there. You know, you'll wait till your son mature a little bit more physical, physically. Like me, when I was uh, 12 years old, I was 6'2", all right? And when I was 14, man, I was dunking. I was, I, I matured uh, fast physically, all right, I, I, when I was 14, I could beat up niggas that was 16, 17, real talk. When I was 17 and 18, I was fighting dudes, I could fight dudes 23, 24, okay? So when you had those, like, freaks, freaks of nature, uh, young guys that mature fast physically and the far you've raised, you've been raised up in the, the ways of the Israelites, man, a 14-year-old, 15-year-old could have their own spot, have their own land, all right, and have their own woman and, and, and be making children, Okay? We got to put off this Western things in our, in our country. When we get back in our kingdom, that's the way life is going to be. I don't want to get off topic. I was just thinking out aloud. All right. These 12 year old monsters, they, when they, all these things that they're doing here in America, the Lord is going to judge them for it. All right. When you 12, you are uh, accountable for your sins that you, that you do. I tell it to my sons all the time. Damn. He's very Jewish. He's very Jewish. He's very Jewish. Before he was wheelchair Jimmy. Yes. On Degrassi, he was Jewish. Before he was Drake the rapper, he was Jewish. Mm -hmm. So it. Drake is an Israelite. His son is a. His dad, father is an Israelite. All that he's a Jewish shit because his mama is Jewish. Let's say if his mama was a, a Jew. Let's say if his his hypothetically speaking, his dad was an Edomite and then his mom was a real Israelite according to the flesh. He would still be an Edomite. That's the so-called white man's rhetoric. That's not true. That's what we out here for, to tell the truth of the scripture. Your pedigree, your nationality, it comes from your father, all right? According to Numbers, the first chapter, all right? Plain and simple. It tells you that clearly in num Numbers 1, 17, eight is 18 on down. It tells you uh, how, to, how, how you were, uh, how a, a son 
was recognized. You was recognized by the pedigree of your father's, your father's house. That's how you would know who you were, okay? Had nothing to do with your mother. Hits very close to home whether he wants to admit it or not. Right. Before DJ Khaled produced a record, he was Palestinian. Before he ever DJed a club with Luke, he was Palestinian. Right, he was. His family are all Palestine, from, mm-hmm. from, from Palestine. I don't want them to take a side. I don't want them to denounce a certain side, mm-hmm. unless they, of course, feel like it. But they should say something. That's how I feel. Okay, I respect that. What's your take on it? I don't discuss religion and politics. <laughs> <laughs> I... See, that's a coon. All he bought is his money, man. These are coons, man. Our people, amongst my people, are found wicked men. He has no integrity. Religion and politics is the reason we're going to go into World War Three. All right, that's the theme of the day: religion and politics. All right. That, that's what's going on over there. That's why they're bombing each other over there. That's what's going on. Religion and politics. Oil, religion, and politics. So to not want to speak on the most important things that's going on in the earth today, but you want to talk about degeneracy. He'll get on there and talk about another Israelite man, that nigga T.K. T. Kirkland. He'll say if a man not making a sudden amount of money, he shouldn't be with a woman. See, he'll, he'll shit on his own people. He'll talk about degeneracy, but he don't want to talk about the things that's going to change your life drastically. These niggas is pieces of shit. Your entertainers, your so-called leaders, they trash. They're nothing. All right? They're the reason uh, our people are in a comatose state. All right? What what does this nigga T.K. Kirkland, all he do is stand up comedy and just talk bullshit. Folly is said in great dignity. All he talk about is vain things. Folly. All right? He's a piece of shit talking about he don't talk about religion and politics. That's all we talk about here in Great Millstone. All right. We come and tell the truth of the scriptures and tell you the religions of the heathens are uh, 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 abominations to the Lord. Come back to the Lord's scriptures and learn the ways of the Lord. All right. We are spiritual people. We're not a religion, religious people. Religion was given to us by the so-called white man. All right. And the politics has everything to do with the third woe. OK, we tell them the third war, the second war is passed. The third woe coming quickly. Prepare yourself for Jacob's trouble. World War Three, the hour of temptation. All of these things are going to happen in World War Three. Politics have everything to do with it. That's why we are so in the looking at uh, Al Jazeera, uh, C-SPAN, the the stock market. All right, that's why we're into all those things. But because the the scriptures, we funnel those things through the scriptures, so and and we're occupied in prophecy. So, but the Lord's second c- coming don't get us like a thief in the night. We're on our watch. But when you got men like that, they're rocking you to sleep with degeneracy. All right. The blind follow the blind. You're going to both fall in the ditch. OK. And, and and not to get off topic. All right. DJ Khalid and, and Drake are not speaking on the things that are going on amongst their people because they've been compromised. And anybody that comes to this ministry, anybody that comes to this truth, your mind is fully persuaded. That's what you don't never want to happen to you. All right. You don't never want to be compromised by this B system. You got you got to be unplugged from it. All right. This is uh first Timothy chapter six, verse 10. And it's written for the love of money is the root of all evil. This is what compromised me. All right. My personal opinion, a lot of these Israelite camps have been compromised for the love of money. All right. 501c3 three charters are covenants with the heathen. You've been compromised because they in detail tell you certain things that you can and can't do to get those government uh, perks that they give. OK, I, I seen someone do a video today where, where uh, Nate said something about uh, ah, who video it was I seen today. It was one of the beloved brothers did a video showing that Nate been so long. Oh, I think it was Ed Ariala. I think it was Ed Ariala. Remember to say bye. Don't call me on it, but I think that was his video, okay? But you're compromised when you go deal with this devil, all right, to get his money, get his grants, all right, whatever he gives you, all right? He's going to give you He's gonna give you those resources, but criteria is going to come with those resources, all right? He's going to tell you things you can do and things you cannot do if you take his money, all right? We don't have that over us 
a great millstone. We come and do exactly what Yahweh Bashim Shai told us to do. We don't deal with this devil. We don't make covenants with this devil, man. That's how you get compromised, okay? Which while some have coveted after, and, and that's what people do for filthy lucre. They cover after uh, the riches of the world. They have erred from the faith, all right? So there's certain things you can't teach. They don't teach in the name of Yahweh Bashim Shai. They teach in Jesus Christ most blessed, whatever the fuck that is, Okay? That's what happens when you get compromised. These guys, people are getting blown up over there. He can't even speak on it because he's compromised. He'll get his money taken away from him and pierced themselves through many sorrows. And in his mind, he got to be plaguing in the mind if he got a conscience. All right. He want to speak on it and can't. All right. That, that got to be. So, uh, he has to be a sorrowful soul, man, because he sold his soul, man. OK. And that's what happened to these peoples uh, here in America, man. Okay, they sell their soul for filthy lucre. But thou, O oh man of Yahweh, flee these things, all right? The Lord tell us, don't never let a man beguile you and deceive you there. Beware of that no man beguiles you or bewitch you, okay? He say, get from around people that try to compromise you, all right? That bring you a money purse so they can put yokes and straights on you. And follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. That means keep your integrity. You do all those things, you're a man of integrity. Those are personality traits of men that are men of integrity. They'll die for what they believe in before they go and uh, submit to this devil system. All right? Uh, Judas uh, Maccabees, his, his father, Matthias, he said, I die before I eat this pork. All right? That's what happens when you're a man of faith, all right? That's what happens when you're a man of righteousness, godliness, love, patience, and meekness, all those fruits of the spirit. It's just certain things you're not going to do. You can't be compromised. You will not be compromised. The elect men, it say if it were possible that they would deceive the very elect. It's not possible. Let me get that, all right? This is, uh, all right? And, and, and deceive and being compromised is one of the same. Okay, this is Matthew chapter 24, uh, uh, verse 24. For there shall rise false Christ, and the so-called white man is a false Christ. He's a, another Christ. False prophets, all right? We got false prophets amongst our people. These other camps, they have been compromised, and they shall show great signs and wonders. And as much, if it were possible, they would deceive the very elect, and it can be happening. Very elect men cannot be compromised, deceived, or bewitched. Okay, it's not going to happen. So the way that don't happen is you have to get this doctrine and cleave to it and hold to it. All right. You got to be a doer of the word. All right. You got to consistently seek the Lord while he may be found and pray without ceasing and ask the Lord to keep a, uh, a strong spirit. All right. You got to mortify your members. I always bring that out. Uh, the book of Colossians tell you to mortify your members. After you mortify your members, then you got to fortify your members. All right, what mortifies your members is the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Al Shai. All right, it takes all those yokes and those bonds, those bonds that were put on us, all right, here in America with the philosophies we learned. All right, so you break those chains off of you mentally, and then you fortify yourself with the same spirit, okay? Because wisdom is a defense. You fortify your mind with wisdom, okay? This is uh, the book of Jeremiah. chapter 2, verse 33, okay, and it's written, why trimmest thy way to seek love, you see? These guys trimmest that trim their way, they don't want to lose their fans, they don't want to say the wrong thing, they don't want to offend nobody, and ultimately they don't want to lose their money and their place in society, all right? Therefore, have thou taught the wicked with thy ways, all right? When you do that, you're wicked. You're, you're look at your people get utterly destroyed to keep money to, to keep worldly riches all right that's a wicked nigga you wouldn't want a nigga like that nowhere in your presence man all right you and that's how hey that's how our people are all right don't get it twisted that's how our people are those guys on on, on they're celebrities so you know they'll see more but I, you have people in your family that are just like that they're compromised they're drunk off of this society's wine man okay 
they, us in this ministry and brothers that are coming to this ministry and a few sisters that listen, you don't want that to happen to you. All right. You got to cleave to the body, cleave to this doctrine. All right. And the Lord will protect your mind from getting um sed seduced by this, uh, this great red dragon. All right. This is Mark 8 and 36. For what profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul and die here in America? Get those missiles, destroy your ass. The famine, kill your ass. The pestilence, cleave to you. What good was it you uh, making a contract with this so-called white man and you lived in a mansion, had a few Bentleys, all right, and you lived on the high hill for a short period of time? Was it, was it worth it? All right, when you die, hold up. Let me get a precept. Let me prove to you. Uh, oh, what's that scripture in the Apocrypha? Bear with me. I know it's in the Apocrypha. Uh, is this all right? Bear with me. A moment of pain makes you forget a life of a... Uh, a moment of pain makes you forgive a life of, of luxury. I, I'm roughly paraphrasing it. Uh, what's this scripture? Oh, please get to me, Lord. We got a scripture that says, um, uh, a moment of pain, I'm roughly paraphrasing, a moment of pain makes you give you a life of, for, oh, pleasure. All right, the word pleasure. That's what I could use, the word pleasure. I think pleasure has something to do with it. I'm spelling pleasure wrong. Shit. Okay, now it should pop up. All right, now it should pop up. Here we go, gotcha. The water y'all by Shemal Shah. Here we go, Sirach 11 and 27. And this is for the, those that those people that get compromised, all right? This is, this is, this is their lot right here. The affliction of an owl make of a man forget pleasure <laughs> and his... And in his end, his deeds shall be discovered. You see? The affliction of it out. So when the Lord bring down his judgment, these guys is gonna forget all of the days they had on a high on a on a high hill. All right, all those days they lived in the lap of luxury. All right. The Lord is gonna bring up when that when they all hell break loose, that affliction of an hour is gonna make them forget every day they live in, in the lap of luxury and um conform to uh these satanic principles, okay? That's what happens when you sell your soul, man. In one hour, all your riches can be get brought down to nothing. Hold up, let's prove it. In one hour, out of all this so-called white man's glory and splendor, splendor, he's gonna you he's gonna lose it in one hour. And all right, this is Revelation eight and one. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. And that's how long it's gonna take these uh, missiles to come over here and destroy this place. All right, in one hour, man. All right. Hold up. It's another one. All the riches. No, I think it might be 11. Bear with me. In one hour, in one hour, all these riches came to naught. Bear with me. All right. All right. There goes second words past the second one coming quickly. Oh, what a preset we talk about in one hour. Oh. Bad one. I thought it was an 11. This is not the one I want, though. That's not the one I want. So it got to be 18. Well, I was headed to it first. It has to be over here. Okay? What I want is over here. Okay?
Here we go. No, that's that's not it. Boom, boom. All right, it must be the, the day then. I got the hour confused with the day. All right, here we go. Oh, here we go right here. Got it. Got him. Got him. Got him. All right, this is Revelation 18 and 9. And the kings of the earth who had committed fornication lived deliciously with her. All right, these are all the people that sold their soul, that were compromised. They shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke in the, of her burning. All right, and everybody's going to forget about those riches. All right, standing afar off of the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, the great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one, model, one hour is thy judgment come. All right. Out of all this splendor, all these trillions of dollars, these billions of dollars, mansions, uh, acres of, of land, tons of gold, all right? All of that's going to get taken away in one hour. So why sell your soul when you got a, a mortal kingdom coming for something that's going to get taken away in one hour, all right? And that's what these entertainers do. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buy their merchandise anymore. All right. All those things you did to get rich. All right. In this day, ain't nobody gonna want to sit here to rap, hear rappers no more. And nobody gonna be looking at the NBA. That that fashion of life is gonna pass away. The things that you were doing to get rich, nobody's gonna buy it no more. Nobody's gonna be into that. They're gonna be into the new rulers of the galaxy. They're gonna be wanting to know what the guardians of the galaxy have to say. They're not gonna want to hear what Ja Rule have to say. <laughs> What days you feel? Well, no, but who the fuck want to hear what Dr. Ja Rule got to say? Who the fuck want to hear what, what uh, the Jay-Z got to say in that day? When all hell break loose, ain't nobody going to want to hear nothing because they say the stars of heaven will be bought down low, man. Okay? Nobody ain't want to hear nothing these niggas got to say, man. Okay? So that's that's this is the reason you don't want to get compromised, man. With food, water, and raiment, be you content, man. Don't sell your soul, man. All right, like these guys, you, you can look at your people getting destroyed and can't say nothing because you're scared that they, the, the uh, so-called white man is going to take away your riches. You're a piece of shit. You're a piece of fucking shit. OK, this is Second Maccabees. 10 and 20, and it's written. Now, they that were with Simon being led with covenants were persuaded for money through certain of those that were in the castle and took 70,000 drachms and let some of them escape, all right? This is what people do. They get compromised. They, they turn coat on their people. They trade. They become traitors to their people. But when it was told Maccabeus what was done, he called the governors of the people together and accused those men that had sold their brethren for money and set their enemies free to fight against them. And that's what Drake is doing. All right. That's what uh, DJ Khalid is doing. And that's what two thirds of our people are ultimately going to do. All right. They're going to trade on their traders to their people. They're traders first and foremost to your heavenly father, your great king. OK. And therefore, this is what's going to happen to all you people that get compromised uh, and seduced by the riches of this world. All right. For the love of money. So he slew those that were found traitors and immediately took the two castles. All right. Those things written the fourth time was written for our learning. That's what happened to compromised men. You're going to inherit smoke and ashes. All right. That's what the fuck going to happen to you. This is uh, 2 Maccabees chapter 1, verse 11. You can't even speak up for your people. You can't even talk on it. All right. In fear that you, you, your, your resources are going to get taken away. Man, you're DJ Khalil is a piece of shit. You're a piece of shit. And nobody give a fuck about the Palestinians, the Arabs. I'm just saying, this is an example to show what happens when you get locked into the system. All right? Because you got Israelites in that same position. All right? They can't speak on certain matters. All right? It don't matter if their parents is getting oppressed. Their children are getting oppressed. They can't speak on it because they don't want to lose their place in Rome. All right? First, uh, Second Maccabees 111. In so much, Yahweh have delivered us from great perils. The Lord delivered us from that. All right. He delivers, delivers you from the oppression of man first mentally. That's This is why this is a spiritual warfare. The war is for your mind. 
we thank him highly as having been in battle as against the king. All right. And we're in a battle. We're in a mental warfare, a spiritual warfare against the philosophies of this world, against the so-called white man, and his educational industrial complex. All right. We're at war against this thing, man. This B system. All right. This B system wants your mind. It wants to pollute your thinking for he cast them out that fought within the holy city. OK. And, and our people that are, are in league with the people that come against the holy city, you're going to be destroyed. OK. For when the leader was come into Persia and the army and the army with him that seemed in seemed invincible, they were slain in the temple and then they were by the deceit of Nana's priests. For Antio Anti Antiochus, all right, this is where Greek Hellenization started. This is when the so-called white man started polluting our people's minds, all right? Because the other nations before the so-called white man didn't care about us worshiping our God. They didn't care about us sacrificing in temples and going to the synagogues. All they wanted us to do was play tri pay tribute to them. But Antiochus, when he was raised up, he said, no, you can't even listen to your God. You can't uh, keep your customs, your culture. And if you're fine doing it, we're going to kill you. All right. Now that we are doing it again, that spirit that was in Antiochus is going to come down on us with great wrath because it don't want us to know who we are. OK, so a lot of our people in this in this, in this truth, IUIC, HOI, uh, Sakari, they took that money person. They've been compromised. And you can tell by the things that they teach. OK, for anti anti and. Antiochus Antiochus, tomato, tomato, as though he would marry her, came into the place and his friends that were with him to receive money in the name of, of a diary. And which which when the, the priest of Nineveh had set forth, he was entered with a small company to compass the temple that they shut the temple as soon as Antiochus was coming in. All right. So when. Uh, occupying nation come to the temple, we're supposed to die for that. OK. A lot of our people were fearing, all right? A lot of our people were compromised during those times, all right? We didn't care about our houses getting ravaged in that time, okay? We didn't care about, you know, we, we were found faithful to death when we had the zeal for the temple, all right? That's why our precious thing was. Our first mindset in the ancient world was to protect the temple. And it opened the privy door of the roof. They threw stones like thunderbolts and struck down the captain and hewed in pieces and smoked off their heads and cast them to those that were without. Blessed be our power in all things who have delivered up the ungodly, all right? And that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to be found faithful unto death, all right? We're supposed to be found faithful unto death. We're not supposed to get compromised and deceived by the so-called white man, all right? Fuck his riches. Let him, he can have that shit. Like the nigga said on damn presidents, keep your shit, man, all right? This is uh first John chapter two verse fifteen and it's written Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For if a man love the world, the love of if Yahweh is not in him. And them guys are synchronized with the world, okay? And two thirds of our people, they won't have it any other way. All right. They just want to flourish in Babylon. We don't we don't care about flourishing in Babylon. As long as we have our food, water and raiment, roof over our head, Wi-Fi. All right. Running water, uh, air conditioner to protect us from the heat. All right. Heater to protect us from the blizzard. We good. OK. A job to pay our bills. We good here in Babylon. OK. We're not worried about becoming rich in Babylon. We just need the Lord is going to give us the necessities we need to push this ministry. OK. All right. So we're not of this world for all the all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the flesh comes with you doing whatever it takes to get money so you can live on a high hill. That philosophy that America pushes getting rich or die trying. All right. And do whatever and doing whatever you are. Um, well, whatever it takes to get rich, it, even if it means compromising yourself, all right? Going against things you don't believe. A lot of those entertainers, they, they're not homosexuals, but they got to do some homosexual acts to keep that money and to get that money, all right? So they're compromised. And the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father, but of this world, okay? So we have nothing to do with those things. If somebody come and ask us something about the truth, we're going to speak it, 
All right, when we out there teaching the truth of the scriptures, we giving it un, we giving it raw and uncut, and we don't give a fuck who it offends or if we gotta have a lose a job for doing it. You have brothers that have lost their jobs for teaching the truth of the scriptures. Okay, this is the book of Job, chapter twenty one. I'm going to start at verse 13, all right? And it's written, they spend their days in wealth and in a moment go down to the grave. That's what happened when you sell your soul, all right? A man of the Lord, a servant of Yahweh, Shabbat Shai, we are not going to die. So who would compromise wealth of the earth for immortality, all right? This present For this present distress, okay, like Paul said, we'll go through this, all right? We'll go through these hard times. All right. We'll be persecuted. We'll be demonized because we know what the Lord has in store for them that love them. And that's immortality. Therefore, therefore, they say unto Yahweh, depart from us, for we desire not the knowledge of the ways. That's what happened when men get compromised. And this is the way of the so-called white man. OK, this is the way of the heathen. They don't want to hear nothing about the Lord. OK. What is the almighty that we should serve him? This is what happened when you get rich in America. You get that mindset. All right. Everything's going good for you. I don't need the most high. That's what happened to our people when they get rich. And what profit should we have if we pray unto him? If you pray unto him and preach his word, it's going to go against you in Babylon because they're going to these corporate Jews is going to take away your riches and your wealth. You might lose some jobs. So they definitely not going to do that. That's what happened when you compromise. And that's what happened. With, that's why Nate Satan, them over there, you IUIC is saying most high Christ blessing. They won't teach in the name of Yahweh about Shemiah Bashai. All right, they'll get their resources taken away from them. Lo, their God is not in their hand. The counsel of the wicked is far from me. How is the counsel of the wicked put out? And how often come their destruction upon them? Yeah, how would distribute distribute of soul, sorrows in his anger? And that's what's gonna happen to everybody that was compromised, everybody that was sold out. All right, everybody that don't tell the truth. Okay. The Lord is going to snuff out your candle. So that's why you, you strive for the truth into, the, into death. All right? With all you're getting, get understanding and tell the truth, man. So I don't want to write this out. This was edifying to the hearers. So I'm going to get infinite honors to my heavenly father, my great king. Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shah, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Kakadash. Double honors to our apostles and other bishops, a great millstone. And salutation to my fellow ladies in the Mashiach Yahweh Shah, pushing his beloved true cross for wins. Kormi Asharala, Abba Abba.